Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to our Godot Action RPG Part 15. In the last video, we actually forgot to set up our enemy death effect, so we're going to be doing that in this video. And I had some ideas for how we can set up the effects to be a little bit better anyways. So we'll be going over that, and we'll be fixing a few little bugs, cleaning up our code just a little bit. So this is a bit of a maintenance video. It might not be super exciting, but a lot of the time, these types of things are common while you're working on your game. Just little maintenance things, fixing up some code, cleaning up some code. It's good to do that often and help keep your project nice and clean and manageable. So first, let's go into our player. And if you, actually, if you run the game right now, and we roll, we actually roll the correct direction based on which direction we're facing. But if we attack, our character attacks up, not the direction we're facing. So the easiest way to fix this actually is to go into your animation tree and come into your parameters and just set all of the parameters on your different uh, actions here to be the same. So we'll set zero, one for the attack, 0, 1 for, or 0, tab 1 for the idle, 0, tab 1 for roll, and 0, tab 1 for run. That way the blend positions all start out in the same direction, and I set them all uh, to face down. That way our character starts out the game facing down. If we attack, they attack down, and if we roll, they roll to the left. Well, that's because, if you remember, our roll vector right here we set it up to the left so we need to set this to down as well but i just have your default be down for when your character starts in the room and once we have that set up then they should work in all directions like this okay so we set up our stats but we need to add that death effect so let's open up the death or let's open up the effects folder here and come into our grass effect We'll come into the grass effect here. And we set this up using an animated sprite and using a script here. We're actually going to get rid of the grass effect scene. We're just gonna delete it. But we'll keep the grass effect.gd and we'll right click on it and we'll actually come into your scripts here, find the grass effect script here and do control W to close it so that it's not open while we do this. And then we'll right click on our grass effect and rename it and we'll call it effect. So we're going to be reusing this script for all of our different effects. Create a new scene, come up to other node and we'll just have the default be our animated sprite right here and we'll Double click on this, we'll call it grass effect. Now we're doing this because I feel like this is a better way to set up the effects so that they can be reusable. And it was good for me to teach you in the other video, and but now that we're going to need these effects to be reusable, we're gonna do a little bit of refactoring here. That's what we're doing. Like I said, it's some maintenance. So create new frames here, new sprite frames. And we'll name our animation animate, like it was before. We'll load in our grass effect sprite here. Do five horizontal, four vert or one vertical, select all, add, set our speed to 15, and save. Okay, so we don't want this one to be centered, and we set our offset to negative eight and negative eight. Remember those specific things? So now we can save this grass effect, but we'll want to, we'll want to get our grass effect.gd and drag it up and drop it here. So we can use this same script on multiple different effects. So there's gonna be a problem here, so we're gonna run the game so we can see the problem. Kill the grass, and we get an error message. And it says invalid set frame index on base null instance with value of type int. That's confusing. Well, first of all, you can see we have an on ready var. We're trying to get the, the 
grass effect because remember, originally, the animated sprite was actually a child of our Node2D, but we didn't actually need that for this situation. So we're gonna actually get rid of that. And then we can just set the frame and the play on this, because this is the node we're accessing that the script is attached to. We no longer have to do that. And our animation, this, this function right here, was supposed to be set up to a signal. But you can see the identifier frame isn't declared in this scope, so we're still having an error here. The reason we're having an error still is because this script still extends Node2D, but it's attached to an animated sprite. And that's a really important thing to know about Godot, is that when you create a script, it has to extend the node it's attached to. It has to inherit from the node it's attached to. So this has to be animated sprite. And it should turn green like that. And now our frame is working properly. So let's run it again and attack and we're not it's the grass animates but it's never being destroyed okay so that's a problem right well this is because this function right here is no longer connected to a signal we could connect it manually you know animation finished right here and then connect it up but the problem with that is whenever we create a new grass effect and we drag and drop the script on it won't have that connection because that's a connection in the editor. So we want to learn how to connect a signal through code. That way, when we drag this grass effect.gd at the start of the game, it will connect its own signal no matter what grass, no matter what effect it's attached to, it can connect its animation finish signal to you free. So let's do that here. We'll say, uh, let's see, we'll say connect. And then we need to tell it what signal, animation finished. We need to tell it the, the object that we're connecting that signal to, and that's going to be our self. And we need to tell it the function that we're going to connect to. And we want to connect to, I'm going to rename this on animation finished, like this. Okay. So this is how you can connect in code. And actually there's one more step here. Uh, this isn't required in this case, but in other cases it is required. So here's how it works. The object that has the signal, which in this case is our self, that's why we don't actually need this. But, but if, you were, if it was a different object that had a signal, you would have to put that object here, that node, right? The object or node that has the signal, the signal to connect to, the object or node that has the function and the function that we're connecting to. So that's the order like that. We'll take this off right there, but that's how I remember it. And now when we run the game, it should automatically get rid of the grass effect like that. So we've created a reusable script right here that we can apply to multiple different effects right and technically we no longer since we don't have this playing right here and the frame is already set to zero we technically don't need this right here either you could leave it in if you just want to make sure that it always plays from the very start you know in case somebody messes with it in the editor it'll it'll still play from the very start frame but it technically isn't required anymore so now we can create a new effect come into other node animated sprite and we can call this death effect or enemy death effect. We'll call it enemy death effect. And we can drag up our effect.gd script and drop it on here. And then we can do new sprite frames and call this animate. And we can select our enemy death effect. This has one vertically, and I don't remember how many horizontally. 10, it looks like. Select all frames, okay. And we'll do a speed of 15, I think, as well. We'll keep it on centered, but we'll give it a bit of an offset. Let's do negative eight. 
I will just push it up just a little bit so that it looks closer to the bat and then we can save that. The other thing we want to do here is, so now, now we're able to reuse that script, right, for different effects. So whenever we want a new effect, we can just drag that script, attach it to an animated sprite, and get that reusable effect like that. And now, if we come into here, let's see, not into at sprite frames here, but into our grass scene. Remember how we loaded this, uh, we loaded the grass effect here like this? That means every time a grass effect gets created, it reloads this scene. Well, we can do a preload instead. So const preload, or let's see, const grass effect equals preload, and then just grab this same path that we had before here and put it right there. And that's all you need to change. And basically what that does is it means it'll preload this resource and then attempt to share it. Uh, that's my understanding anyways, is that it preloads this and attempts to share it so that we're not reloading it every time we create a new grass effect. We just load it once at the start and then reuse that wherever we need to. So preload is a good thing to learn about and we'll be using it for our enemy too. So let's come into our bat. And we'll come up here to the top, we'll do const preload, or const enemy death effect equals preload. And we'll do enemy death effect dot tscn, like that. And then when we die, we can just say var main equals get tree. Well, for this one, I do actually want to use the... I want to use... I want to use the Y sort, and I think our enemies, our enemies are a child of this Y sort. So we can do, we'll, we'll do get parent for this one. We could do it with the grass effect as well, technically. And we may end up wanting to do that. Some of you pointed that out and actually it's a pretty good idea. So I think we should do it. So what we'll do instead of getting main here, it's good for you to know how to get the main node, but now we can just say, var enemy death effect and see the first one's lowercase here equals instant or let's see enemy death effect dot instance like this so we'll instance our scene then we'll say get parent dot add child enemy death effect lowercase one here then we'll say enemy death effect dot global position equals global position. In this case, we could actually just use position instead of global position because it's going to be relative to the parent anyways. But either one works. We'll just use global position here to be safe to make sure that we get it in the same position the enemy was in. And we'll do the same thing for our grass here. So instead of getting the world scene right here, we'll just do get parent dot add child like that. And that should work there too. So now when we run the game, we should be able to get the death effect when the, when the bats die. And there we go. We get the death effect when the bats die and the grass as well. And that death effect should be, since it's attached to the Y sort, it'll work properly for our depth sorting too. You can see now if we chop grass that's up above us like this, the effect doesn't play over the top of the player. So there we go. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. This video is made possible by my one bit Gitto Kickstarters. There'll be a link in the description for that Kickstarter if you want to check it out. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and, a, and uh, subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And I will see you all in the next video.